The Bears have decided the coach for now is staying, Matt Eberflus. Um, he's going to return. They fired the OC. They fired the quarterback coach. Chicago does not do offense well. Historically, they can be pretty good defensively, and the Bears defense did play well down the stretch. Uh, I'd move on from both, but if I have to keep one, probably be the coach because coaches don't have salary caps, right? So what does that mean for Justin Fields? Well, it doesn't mean anything, necessarily. It doesn't mean Eberflus loves him. It means Eberflus was given a choice. You're fired or clean out your offensive staff. My guess, he gets one more year, but it'll be with Caleb Williams. With almost any other NFL franchise, I could, with a high degree of certainty, predict what's going to happen over the next few months, uh, but I can't with the Chicago Bears. They butcher offense, they butcher quarterbacks, they, they can't get anything right. Um, Caleb Williams, think about it in the simplest terms. If Caleb Williams is not better than Justin Fields at all, and he is, but if he's not, in fact, if Caleb Williams in his first 38 starts goes 10 and 28 like Justin Fields, misses 11 games due to injuries like Justin Fields, finishes last place like Justin Fields, if he's not an one iota better, you still obviously draft him to restart the salary clock. It's a no-brainer for everybody in the world not called the Chicago Bears. And Caleb Williams, according to every scout I know, is a much better prospect, a much, much better thrower of the football. With USC's middling talent, they led the nation the last two years in offense. They don't have Ohio State's offensive talent. They don't have Washington's or Oregon's. They have one good receiver last two years, Jordan Addison. He left this year. They still led the nation in offense with Caleb Williams. But if he wasn't better than Justin Fields at all, and if you could project he's going to go 10 and 28, you'd still draft him for the salary cap. Again, this is really easy for the next several months. Draft Caleb Williams, right? Uh, trade Justin Field, get a second round pick, and then try to move down with a number nine pick, though that's easier said than done. I'm not a big Eberflus fan. Wrong side of the ball, don't think he's great. But coaches don't have salary caps. Right? So I can give him one more year. I start giving Justin Fields, who misses games, who doesn't win, one more year. Now i got to make another decision, and next year's quarterback class is not as good as this year's, where you could have two or three stars, Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, who knows about Bo Nix, Michael Penix. So, um, listen, the Chicago Bears and offense go together like tuna fish and ice cream. Right? Like, I like offense, and I like the Bears. but I And I like tuna fish, and I like ice cream. None go together. To, to really double down, triple down, quadruple down on this, two Bears offensive coordinators, two in the last 25 years, <laughs> have lasted more than two years. John Shoup and Ron Turner, the next offensive coordinator, this is not a misprint, will be their 13th OC in 26 seasons. They just don't know offense. They're still honoring defensive greats from 85. So the Chicago Bears, of course, butchered Justin Fields' first team. Of course, they'll retain their defensive head coach. Of course, they're firing their offensive coordinator and quarterback's coach. I would have moved off both. They're keeping one. Don't make a mistake and keep two. Justin Fields has value. But if he's, and Caleb Williams, if they're even, if they're even, and I don't think they are, you draft Caleb Williams just for the salary cap availabilities. So they're making moves. Chicago's always making moves. All right. So the Lakers last night beat Toronto 132-131. And... Um, you know, listen, uh, uh, we got conspiracy theories everywhere in the world now. Politics, sports, vaccines. It's just a loser's paradise. I got no interest with conspiracy theories. I know your favorite podcaster does them, and maybe your favorite New York quarterback does them. I'm not a conspiracy theory jockey. It's not my thing. I think mostly I follow science. I follow rules. I follow laws. I don't see. Now, that doesn't mean historically there haven't been a few that have hit. But, uh, you know, I can hit a full court shot in basketball once in my lifetime, too. But um, the, the Toronto coach, uh, Darko Rykovic, is absolutely certain 
Something was fishy last night with the officiating. I'm going to pick this apart. Now, there was a late game charge. Anthony Davis flopped. I didn't love that call. It negates a three-pointer by the Raptors. I didn't like that call, but it's the NBA. Flops still work. They're trying to outlaw them. They still work. I didn't love this call. Boo-hoo. I didn't love every call Michigan-Washington. I didn't love every call in the NFL last weekend. It's pro sports. But let's let's dismantle this silly argument. Ten of the 11 Laker free throws in the fourth quarter were in the last 30 seconds as the Raptors had to foul. The Lakers also lead the NBA in free throw differential this year and last year. Why don't they foul? Because Anthony Davis is the NBA's arguably NBA's best defensive player. He didn't foul out in New Orleans. He doesn't foul out in Los Angeles. Anthony Davis is an unbelievable defender. I think he's the best in the NBA, and he is very disciplined. He doesn't foul. By the way, LeBron doesn't foul out. Either did MJ. Either did Kobe. The greats don't foul out. Right? LeBron, when he wants to play defense occasionally, he doesn't commit a lot of fouls. So your two stars don't commit them. Also, also, Scotty Barnes doesn't draw fouls outside of the top 50. He's not a top 10 player in the NBA. He's a good player. He doesn't draw fouls. Also, what teams, what teams draw fouls? Teams that score closer to the rim. The Lakers do not shoot a lot of threes. <laughs> they don't. Why? Because they don't have a lot of good three-point shooters. So Anthony Davis doesn't foul a lot, Lakers or Pelicans. He's fouled out one time in six years. LeBron doesn't foul a lot. Every metric, every data point, every reality is on the Lakers' side. Scotty Barnes doesn't draw a lot of fouls. I didn't like the off-ball charge. That was a bad call. Not bad. It was just it was a go-either-way call. I didn't love it. I didn't love every call Michigan-Washington, texas Washington, Michigan, Bama, that's sports. Not everything's a conspiracy theory. The metrics tell you Scotty Barnes doesn't draw fouls. The Lakers don't foul. The Lakers don't shoot threes because they don't have good three-point shooters, so they score closer to the rim, meaning the Lakers get to the free throw line a lot. The more you shoot threes, generally, the, f uh, the fewer free throw attempts you get. I thought it was wildly entertaining after the game. I mean, if he's going to get fined like through the roof and should, but this is the class. This is what you get now. Like, well, the president said if you take the vaccine, you can't get COVID. That was a mistake by the president. He didn't know, like a lot of people didn't know. You can take the vaccine and you can get COVID. It does, however, help you in most cases, especially if you were overweight or older. So you can pick little parts of things and say it's a conspiracy. People make mistakes. Presidents make them, doctors make them, officials make them, teams make them, GMs make them. We all make mistakes. Doesn't mean there's some vast conspiracy theory. The Lakers have the best foul differential in the league. Well, that's because that's because they don't shoot threes. And they score close to the rim. And they do some bully ball. They're a big, powerful team. A lot of bully ball. And they don't shoot threes. Well, Scotty Barnes doesn't draw fouls. He's outside of the top 50. Well, LeBron never gets called for a foul. How many times did MJ foul out? Wilt. <laughs> Kareem, Kobe, LeBron, Steph, they don't. Stars get the whistle. Just because a referee makes a mistake or it's a call that doesn't go your way, and I didn't like it. I don't like the flopping stuff. I've always understood flopping. D. Wade was great. There's an art to it. I don't think it makes you less of a man, uh, less alpha. I think there's an art to basketball. I really, Of all the sports, it's got the most – artistic flair it's an open canvas every player's jumper looks different every player has their own stylistic aesthetic it's optics basketball is very unique football there's one way to tackle <laughs> you know most most quarterbacks throw the same way same mechanics but one bad call doesn't mean the league is favoring the lakers the league is always leaned into the stars kevin durant doesn't foul out lebron doesn't michael didn't kobe didn't wilt didn't jabbar didn't russell didn't that's just the way it is you let the stars get the whistle. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.